in the state house. To who at the state house? To the president himself. Did you eventually got to meet him? Yeah, it took, it took hours, but I eventually met him. Did you meet him alone? Yeah, when he called me, and he came out with securities or whatever, that, but when we went to his small house, a little known as glass house, um, he actually asked everybody to I was with him. Hello. Oh, yeah, hello. And what happened? Well, he just smiled at me, and that was my first time meeting him, actually. I was a bit agitated, uncomfortable, actually. Um, he just smiled, then I introduced myself, my, you know, mentally. Um, he asked me, you run my samples for my patient sample? I said, yes. Um, how do you find it? I said, well, they all came out positive. And he said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. Because I know what I'm doing. So they said, okay. Can you run them again? I said, yes. Because who took the sample? I said, I didn't take the sample. The samples were brought to me. So he said, now, you yourself, go and collect these samples and run them and come and tell me the outcome. And I did that. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. The first samples you tested and they all came out positive. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Do you know from whom they were collected? Absolutely not. You don't know who they belonged to at all? No. So, this time round, you were asked to go and collect the samples yourself, correct? Yes. So yes. proceed, what happened after that? After collecting the sample. How did you know, how did you know from whom you had to collect these samples? Samples, samples, samples. From who? From the patient. Well, so, were patients, a set of patients presented to you? Yes. Uh, who, brought, who brought them? Well, they were sitting out there. Out there yes, where? Sir. Out there where? Outside the ground. Okay. In the house. They outside. were... They were yeah, already in the state house. That's it, yes. Okay. And uh, you went to them and collected samples? Yeah. From how many individuals? Actually, um, These individuals are the same people who provided the first samples. Did you know I that? I don't know that. Oh, I don't know that. You don't know that? I don't, okay. I don't okay. Know that. So this time around, what did your yeah. test results show? It shows the same results. It shows the same results. They all came out positive. They all came out positive. All right. Yeah. And what happened after that? Did you report but, back to him? Yes, I did report back to him. Was but he happy? He was, was he pleased no. with the results? No, he was not. He was not. Uh, what, could you explain further? Yes. So when I came back with the second test results, he was not happy. So he just kept on smiling and laughing to himself. So I, I just had to sit still and wait for his reaction or whatever he wants again. Well, um, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 
at the time he asked me, can we for the test? I said, well, we have facilities here. We have collaborators, but we've got the facilities. It's MRC, we can here. Because I collaborate a lot with them. So the only, facility, uh, the only machines that we have for the test is the CD4 you know, count machine that we had in the lab at the time. It was also not a my unit, but in the chemistry unit. So he said, he don't talk to anybody. Let nobody get close to his facing, either he come close. I said, well. What did he say? Did he say anything about MRC? Yes, he did. Tell because us. Because when I put to him about MRC, they are our new collaborators. They've got CD4 count machine, they've got PCR machine, but the viral growth machine. He said, whenever MRC got close to his sample, close the institute. So I said, well, and I would did, did he that. say he was going to close MRC if they get close to his samples? Sample. That is what he, he said. Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, let me let me just take you to your statement and uh, read out what you had there. You said that you had facilities and uh, your pathology laboratory used to collaborate with MRC Gambia for any further advanced tests if the need arises. This was not the case with the PATP. The president was absolutely defensive with his treatment. When I told him we can use the MRC facilities. He blankly told me, whenever the MRC got close to his patients, he will close the research council, and I would never live to tell the story. That's the fact. He threatened you. <laughs> you can call it a threat, because you can have a past personal business. But I'm not there to try and make that anything that against the will. Then it's a threat, of course. Uh, but why wasn't he happy with the test results? Well, I can't read, read his mind or whatever is in his mind, but I think his expectation failed because. Actually, he thought my program cured those patients. I don't know whatever was in his mind and whatever was his objective, actually, to achieve. But, 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 but Mr. Mr. Bachelet, his objective was very clear. It was announced to the world. I have a cure for HIV AIDS. I can cure AIDS in three days. Wasn't then that his promise? That, that was his promise. Then it clarifies what, what was in the action then. Because if he reacted here that way, then he get a disappointment outcome. So these are the situations. So he was disappointed, he was angry disappointed. that disappointed. that the test results still show HIV positive. Yes, yes. That That's is your testimony. Yes. He was disappointed yes. that the test results still show HIV positive. positive. Yes. That's your testimony. But my testimony because if they were all came negative as he expected, I don't think that would have been the reaction then. And what happened after that? But after that, he now I, he asked me to do the test. We, we don't have the facilities there. And 
I'm not there to get in touch with MRC, you know, to run those tests. So the only option is not to go outside the country. And tell us what was the testing protocol uh, for testing and carrying samples outside the country. Yeah, we have the facility of sending samples outside the country in the RVK at that time. Because I used to send initial samples to Dakar for confirmation. And then, so I suggested to him, but the only option is I know it's Dakar. So he said, because about the rest, I am not there to talk the rest because he, he don't trust anybody with this, especially the Western world. So when I suggested Dakar, he said, yes. Um, then he said, you can collect the sample. So I said, but we have to relate with the laboratory in Dakar and ask. So when we asked, I think Dr. Bob called back up. Means of transaction or calls, they, they did to the lab and then they asked me to go. Uh, just, just a moment on that. Were you present when Dr. Mbo communicated with the lab in Senegal? Yes, I was in the office. Were you so present you when he was speaking to them? To them, yes. Did you know what the conversation was about, what they said? Well, of course, they, 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 were, they would test the sample. And then I'll bring back the results. In what language were they speaking? Well, in Wolo. I was in Wolo. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you had, did you hear both ends of the conversation? Not really, but through the above, who was on over the phone with them. Yeah, I could hear Dr. Mbo's voice. Okay, all right. So then, after that, you collected the samples. Yes, I did collect the samples. All right. You know, when you collect the samples, you collect them in whole blood, so you have to separate it, put it in a proper container. Mm -hmm. Of what you know, this is so. That's what I did, and then put the right box with the right thing to the highest part, then took it to Senegal. And then what happened when you went to Senegal? So when I went to Senegal, the only place I went to where I normally send um, my missile sample for confirmation. So that's where I went first. Then they directed me to the to the HIV laboratory. And what happened when you went to there, when you got there? When I got there, I met the in charge. So I spoke to him. They said yes, they got the message. And who was the in charge? Um, I can't remember that name. But I know the head of the lab was something like you or before, I can't remember that one. Is it, is it a Professor Suleiman Boop? Exactly, that's the right man. Yeah, I met with him. Yeah. But do, you, lab. do you know that, in fact, Professor Suleiman Boop is one of the leading researchers in Africa and in the world on HIV AIDS? I know Suleiman, I know Dr. Suleiman, I read about him, I read a lot of his signs. Do you know that he is one of the most respected people in this area of practice? 
I know that I know his perspective. Good. So you were in his lab, and then what happened? Yeah. Yes, they introduced me to the staff. Then I joined one of the staff who was running the staff group. Then it took us almost two to three days, I think, for running the sample because I was with him all the time. Mm. But I ran the sample. So at the end of the day, they stamped the sample and then we walked and gave it to me. And, and what, was, what was the result of the tests? Yeah, the result of the test was handed to Dr. Mo. I know he got some undetectable viral loads. So that's where my that's where what? Could you could you take that again? That's where what? <clears throat> that's where I stopped with the results after giving them to Dr. Mo. Did you read the results before you gave them to Dr. Mo? Not really. Not really. So, um, just a moment, before you handed them over to Dr. Mbo, did you know the contents of the results? When we finished running the test, because I was assisting that laboratory technician, I know the results. I know we got some detectable results and some highly positive results. I know, I, I know, I know. Okay. Uh, let's take a few steps backwards. Okay. You personally collected the sample, correct? Yes, I did. Yes. And the person. And the person mm -hmm. from whom you collected these samples, mm -hmm. did you have any scientific evidence about their status before? Apart from the test that I ran? Yes, before the test you yes. took, did you have yes. any baseline information about these mm -hmm. individuals? About them? No. Exactly. So you are testing blindly, correct? Yes, I'm testing places that I don't know about their clinical history, I don't know about their background. Okay, good. So here you are. This was in what, what month in 2007? That was around December, January. January 2007, was it? Just yeah, at the yeah. inception of the program, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a scientist, if a person had undetectable viral load, say in December 2006, all right, and the person joins a treatment program in January 2007, would it be unheard of that that person would still test undetectable? Would it be How would you know? No. How would you know listen, the person listen, was undetectable? Yeah, I'm listen to the question. If in December 2007 a person has tested undetectable, mm. all right? Few weeks later, that person is tested again. Yeah. Would it be unheard of if that person mm -hmm. still tests undetectable? Yeah, it, it, it could be possible. Uh, uh, I'm not sure you understand my question. If a person, if a person conducts a test in December, right? Yes. Like person A is HIV positive. Yes. So person A conducts a test in December mm -hmm. of 2006. 
and the results come out, yes, you are HIV positive, but the viral load is undetectable. Right, yeah. That is in December 2006, right? Yeah. And the person is on antiretrovirals, all right? You would expect, mm -hmm. you would expect that the viral load would still remain undetectable, mm -hmm. isn't it? Correct? Correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If that person tests again in January 2007, wouldn't you expect that that person would still be undetectable? Yes, if that person is regularly taking it or her antiretroviral, of course, the viral will go down to a point where it's still undetectable. Yeah, perfect. These yes. people that you have tested, and uh, some of the results came out to be undetectable, do you know for how long they were already in the presidential program? Actually, I don't know. Do you know whether they've been there, for, they were there for years, or just for a matter of weeks? Absolutely, I don't know. You need to or time they have been there. Well, the program, the program was announced in January. Yes. And you did the test in January, correct? Yes. So it means at most the period they would have been there would be just a few weeks. Could be. I don't know how the length of time they've been there with the test. But but it but certainly it certainly would not be months. It can only I be weeks or that. a matter of days. Um, Mr. Fahad, I can't tell that. That's, that's only the president knows how long he kept them there. Okay, all right. Only, um, that so the only thing I can tell you is, I collected those samples at that time, but how long they stayed there, how long they have been doing that treatment, is beyond my knowledge. Uh, that is perfectly fine. We understand your answer, and it's a very fair answer. Uh, because you don't want to speculate. But we know that the president announced the program in January, and you said you went to test in January, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, was it in January, or did you, when did you go to test? Was it January or was it April? I think it's in January. You went to test in January. But what, whatever it is, uh, do you know how those results were used by the Jame government? <coughs> or rather by Jame himself? By, by Jame himself. How do you say Jame? Because actually, Mr. I, I really need to know and don't die. These are my doctors as a laboratory technician. So whatever interpretation the president may come up with, I'll place it on the doctors. Uh, wasn't it said that President Jame's treatment or cure was successful because people have now returned tests with undetectable viral loads? Wasn't that their okay. pronouncement? Yes, that was the pronouncement. Yeah. And uh, they based the result, they based their pronouncement on the result of the tests the that, result. That, that were carried out in the car. Yeah, that's true. And, and they, they build up, they, they build up uh, the results as showing a breakthrough in the president's treatment or in the president's care. Wasn't that the case? Yeah. That was the case, and if I can come in, just a short story. Um, that breakthrough we're talking about, that was very right, because I have to call Dr. Moore's attention directly to his office. Because the first announcement was kill, a war, kill the And I, I, I like to talk about this is not kill. When viral load is undetectable, that doesn't mean it is eradicated. And what did Dr. So, Mo say about that? 
Could you say that again? That's the time. Could you could you repeat about this? Could you could you we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. So when they announced it in big two, so I walked into Dr. Moore's office and we sat down, we had a chat. I told him I think there's a big mistake. Undetectable goes in we clear. Did, did so Dr. Mo understand that. what you were saying? Yeah, he later understands. You, you're saying he later understands. At first, well, did he understand. understand? When they change the truth, that's I understand now, they understand. Because if you say kill in eradication, it was in an eradication of some which it was not an actual fact. So what they initially claimed and what happened was completely different. Completely different. Completely contrary. Uh, yeah, this, this, this. In fact, do you realize that the laboratory in Senegal they protested the use of the report uh, from? Uh, uh, the report that they, that was provided, they they protested the way it was used by Van Jul. Uh, are yeah. you? Are you? Not only, I was aware. I was. I was aware, Mr. Uh, and, uh, and and it's not only Senegal, but over the world. Uh, who was right on this occasion? Uh, was it the protesters, or was it uh, the claimers of having discovered a cure in Banjo? Who was right? Well, the protesters were right. They the, were the, right. The claim to have a cure for HIV AIDS was a lie. You agree? Was well, not true. It was a lie. It How? Was not a cure. How did you feel walking in this program where the president proclaimed that there was a cure, you are the one who came with the results showing that there was a cure. How did you feel about that? My feelings, I already expressed it. I told you I went to Dr. Bob's office. That was the first step I had to take. Then, the were you step, happy or were you disappointed? Absolutely sad, disappointed. Bad feelings, because if you ask Dr. Maria Jalo, she will, she, will, she, will, she will tell you how I felt about it. That was a betrayal to my nation. That was a betrayal to my people. And it's unacceptable. I don't like it. I feel bad about it. You have used very strong words that this is a yeah. betrayal of your people, this is a betrayal of your country. It was also criminal, wasn't it? It was. It was. And uh, were you surprised when people all over the world said, this is a lie, there is no known cure for AIDS, and under no circumstances may the lab results from Senegal be touted or claimed to be a cure for HIV AIDS? I was not surprised. Mm -hmm. I've been working in HIV, you know, this side for quite a while. And I had a clue, how in there I have a total knowledge of it, but I know it's not curable. So if somebody claims curable, through my name, it affects me. Because I know what is behind it. So, actually, that was the situation. I can't change it. There uh, was no... Uh, yeah. uh, let me read out these things to you, and you tell me what you feel about it. Uh, this is an article dated 25th April 2007. It is from Reuters. Uh, it is our Exhibit 54. 
and uh, it says a researcher, it says Gambian President Yaya Jame's assertion that a herbal treatment had cured patients of the AIDS virus was not only wrong, but some of his supporting data was false. Uh, Exhibit 154, experts, uh, experts said on Tuesday. And then it goes on to say, a researcher in Senegal said Jame's office had misused his lab in testing the blood of the ostensibly cured patients and said none of them had been cured. Do you agree with that? Well, yes, I did. Good. And, and it went on to say that Jame's claims in February were widely derided by AIDS experts but got enough attention to worry the International AIDS Society, a group of 10,000 people who put together major global AIDS conferences and back research. Jame treated 10 patients at his presidential palace. The AIDS Society noted that all of them had been taking eight had been taking standard AIDS drugs. <laughs> all of them were already taking standard AIDS drugs. They were all on ARVs. Wasn't really surprising that some of the test results come out undetectable. Well, it could be a contributing factor. Exactly. Exactly. Because I, I don't know how or when they left that ARV to come and join Jamie's statement. Yeah. So, but I think that's what we do. You know, that the act of taking those ARV would have reduced the viral load for them. And coming in the Jamie's statement, I'm at the end and do you in fact realize that some of those patients tested we are not in fact yet on ARVs because their viral loads were already very low at that time. They were on septrin. Do you realize that? No, I never realized that. See? So in fact, to use the result of such a person who's on septrin because the viral load is so low, and you use the test result of that person to show to proclaim that you have a cure is not only dishonest, isn't it? It is criminal, isn't it? It's completely out of hand. That's completely out of hand. And all these journalists you're talking about, they have been comparing me with information with praise, why am I this, why am I doing the test for him or that. I know my situation at that time. I know what I'm doing, so, so I was not happy with it. But should I commit myself to something that will end up stopping my life so I will. Could you could you explain that further? Yes. The thing is every day I get messages all over the world, Mr. Farr. I was more depressed than any other person you could imagine. Not from the science professor, the designers, all over the world, from South Africa, America, Europe, you name it. Every day I get a drunk of females asking me how am I managing my day. I say, I'm just trying to see myself out of it, but with the help of God, eventually I did. But it was the most depressing period of my life, if you could ever imagine. Why was it so depressing? Of course it was depressing. Why? Because I know what we are doing it was not authentic. Could you say that again? What? Could you say that again? What we were, what he was doing, and we all were in for was not authentic. So it was false. It was false. 
Proceed. You walk, and that it cost my life. You were scared. It cost my family. You were afraid for I your afraid. safety and your security. I was, and my security, not only my security, but my entire family and friends. So that's one factor. How did and you manage? Promotion? How did you manage in yes. such a situation? Well, the only is to have keep my prayers. That's one thing. And the only person who was close to me fighting against this was Dr. Maria Sijalo, who I will never forget in my life. So she was a sole supporter to me because whenever I feel back about it, we just Isolate ourselves in a private place and think, throw our brains together to see how best we can stop this. How many tests have you conducted while you are in Gambia for the PATP? This is a regular thing, I almost, because you always, I think, still doubting to see this thing coming up positive. And what he was fighting was to see that this is coming out negative. So he is regularly but asking this me, could you retest this sample whether they are negative? Could you retest this sample? Well, he was constantly also giving them his our medication. I don't know. Did the test ever come out negative? <laughs> it never come out negative. It never come out negative. Was there ever a time where you were asked to give out false results? <laughs> no. That was never. That was never. And it never occurred to me. Because I don't think in my living soul I would ever live to see such a situation arise. That's not my professional code of conduct. So I know what I'm doing. I know it's good for my people. I know the health, the importance of the health of my people. I, I am a Muslim. I'm scared of that. So you test, you took tests or samples to to Egypt and mm -hmm. also to where? Morocco? Morocco, oh, yes. And uh, for those places, did he get what he wanted? Yeah, I think the, the most pronounced results that he got was from Senegal. But I think as time goes on, the patient stays longer with him. The results from Egypt typically was not that attractive. So my last testing outside the country was pretty which I find very hard then because I spent almost a month or was not that attractive. So luckily, I applied for, for university in the UK. Then when I came back, I just managed to escape. You, did you say escape? Yes, it was an escape. You were running for your life? Absolutely. Because why were you running for your life? Because things, the way I observed it at that time, was not going right. And I know I can't rectify it, not through my verbal solicitation to them. Not through my strength. Not through to enlighten them to make understand things are going wrong. Because people start dying. 
And this scared me. And I spoke to Dr. Maria Sijal about it. She was scared. She was not comfortable with the food, isn't it? So then I have to decide what to do. And your solution was? To go out of the country. How did you feel having to run away? Because our president, your president, was claiming something that was false. It's hard foul, if I tell you. It's hard to leave your country, leave your family, leave your profession, simply for something that you cannot rectify. I lose a lot. Thank God I have gained also. But I lose a lot. If I tell you just about three weeks back, my blood, my blood brother, I you know, at the back of the house in the state died. I haven't seen him for quite nearly 11 years. That break my heart. My first marriage break out of it. Thanks to my, my wife, but I who stood by me to achieve the little thing that I got today. But I cannot sit down here and explain internally what she means, how I felt, how I am feeling at the moment. You, Just you, did you see people discharged from the program as scared? Did you see it on television yes. or were you present? Yes, yes. I, not in my presence, but I have seen it over the TV. But some people are discharged. I know they are not discharged. They are not, sorry, they are not Killed. It was a lie. Okay. It was a lie. What? If you, if you, if you scrutinize the whole history, I think that was an exhausting point whereby he can't go any further with those places. So the only way is to reduce them. In the name of fear or a happy field or whatever. Just to, you know, to ease the tension on you. Because what I have found out at that time was when I left, I was, well, the objective that I left, the reason why I left the program was, was working somehow because most of the things were dropping. Step by step, and eventually, he shifted his treatment from HIV to other foods. So, I think my belief my contributed a big milestone of closing that big of his treatment on the HIV side. Well, for your information, it continued. Uh, but uh, let me read out paragraph 19 of your statement and tell me whether it captures everything you wanted to say. You said here, to sum up, I want to express how I felt throughout that period and the effect it still has on me. I believed I did all I could either to eliminate or minimize the damage that was going on, but it was beyond my control. Because the fact was, I was in a hostile environment with a cloud of uncertainty about if the Constitution that is meant to protect me from any interference in executing my job without fear was capable. Very strong words. 
you are now questioning whether the constitution which lays out the ground rules on how every one of us is governed you are now questioning whether that can protect you that is very deep mr bachini yes you are seriously worried i was but could you tell us more about the hostile environment how hostile was it and where was the hostility coming from well it was where ever you may say this was uh you will limit or may as i mean to say this is it really but how can you that it was really hostile Hostile. Where was the hostility well, coming from? It's coming from the people that we expect to protect us from any harm, so that we can execute our responsibilities to build that nation. If the people who should protect us are the people who turn back on us and start harassing us or redirecting our rules and responsibilities in their personal gain, I don't think that nation can be good for us. Everything fails. Sorry. It was a... Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. It was a hard situation. It was really hostile because you cannot ex you cannot you cannot do anything right. You have to and you can call. Do as you are asked to do and follow the rules that they want. So that was what is existing. So and. And in paragraph 20 of your statement, you said as follows. In hindsight, I could say I should have done significantly more in upholding the principles of care. The health governing bodies should be able to determine the quality and standard of care required without interference. There should be an increased awareness and support also from the public to which held high standards of care in our communities. Strong words again. I think, yeah. yeah, just a bit of explanation on that. I think since the president left, if you look at our community, if you look at our society in the Gambia, I think so we should have pay for more cohesive and tolerance for each other rather than dividing that nation. It's a small country by population. But I think the manpower and the intellectual that we have in that country should have been able to build that nation and never allow the thing as it takes steps in the country. Uh, in your statement, you continued to lament that whatever happened after handing the results to the physicians and the president is unknown to me. Why did you say that? Well, when it comes to the story of information, because information is vital. I don't know nothing about the story of that information. Unknown to me. Do you believe it's that me. do you believe that they were manipulating the data mm -hmm. to suit their own interests? Well, I don't know nothing about it. That's why I said it's unknown to me. Information is very important. Data 
information is very important. The story of information is another important thing. Because personal information should not be designated like that. Were you allowed to were you allowed mm -hmm. to keep the data? I never keep data. Was that normal? It is normal to an extent because I don't request yes. So I can keep data. I can only keep data in a system whereby I collaborate with the moon, with the physician or the doctors that I deal with. So that they can get access and I can get access to that data when it arrives. But as long as I am no longer in that system, I don't need the data. I mean while you were there. While you were yeah, there, were you allowed to keep data? No. Data goes back to the doctors and the passive in charge and that was the president. This um, who was in charge? It's gone. Well, the program was uh, was in the hands of the president. Did he have total control? Completely. Absolutely. Uh, total control. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bachelet. I have no further questions. I would hand you over to the chair and the commissioners for further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bachelet. Thank you very much, the council. But Mr. Bachelet has disappeared. Is that, can I carry on talking? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was a very interesting session. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Uh -huh. Commissioner Jones? Okay, then I'll come, Commissioner. Mr. Bachelet, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, lead Council already asked you the question regarding um, the tests that were, set, that were taken to Egypt and Morocco, but your response was not very audible. Can you please repeat for the record what the results were? Did they come out negative or positive? When you talk about negative or positive, because already samples that are taken to Egypt or Morocco they are all positive, and they never come out negative. Okay. So if you are talking about the viral load, or... Yes, the viral know, load can, because your response was not audible when you um, responded to this question. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. What I said about the sample from Morocco and I said they were not as attractive as the one from Senegal. So we got a lot of positive, a uh, lot of high viral rule from the soil, typically of that of Egypt. So they all came out most high, high, high viral rule. So you got a moderate one. Not, not as part of Senegal, where you got undetectable. Okay, thank you. Which commissioner do? Commissioner Ka? Okay, thank you. Uh, the first question I want to ask is um, in your conversation with the lead council, you mentioned that you are not just afraid for yourself, but for the safety of your family. And I want to know, why were you afraid for the safety of your family? I think I have already expressed that concern to the council of Mr. Falk. I told you the environment was hostile, because everything was not based on the rules and regulations that guide 
the process. There was no law and order. It's an individual's idea, and you have to do it as he stated, whether it's right or wrong. Thank you. Sometimes the audio, the audio is not clear. That's why I have to re-ask that question. The second is, did that change? Uh, my second question is, did that change after you traveled out of the country? And uh, what happened to your family? I, yeah, I feel, I feel that it, it makes a big difference here. Because what I, what, what I thought is, if there is nobody that he trusted like me, it's out of the system, but he might give up or limit his activities. And I think that works because he really actually trusted, trusted me on, with his basic on samples and I am out of the system. So, and he always expressed concern about people tampering with his sample, tampering with his patients, or doing things that would, you know, jeopardize with his treatment. So actually, deciding to go out, I think, make a big difference. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kerr. Uh, Mr. Bachelet, I have just one small question. And that is, yeah. how can you explain the phenomenon that a profession that is based on ethics, that you could have a whole group of people within the profession who would go outside the, the value systems of their profession? Yeah. Uh, I think also that could be attributed to where, you know, that guy, that profession is no more alive, I would say, in a simple sense. Because you can only execute your responsibilities and duties in a free environment. So without those conditions, you could hardly go or do the right thing, I would say. If you are not protected, but dictated, so how can you execute your duties according to the law? So it will be hard. It's, it's easy. It's easy for somebody out there sitting and saying, you shouldn't have done it. Of course, you shouldn't have done it. But if your environment is hostile and you know the repercussion of doing what you are, of not doing what you are trying to do, not trying to say, well, this is not in line with the law, you might end up seeing yourself somewhere else. And if you know that, I think. It's, it's suicidal. So there is nobody who wants to commit suicide in a situation where if you know you do what you are not asked to do, you might end up being somewhere or being killed. Then I see no reason why not. Then just try to play every day and see yourself out of it. It's, it's, it's very heartbreaking, actually, when, when you know the rules and regulations that guide the profession, and then you decide to go against it. So not willingly or intentionally, but you are subjected to it. So, so the only way, as, 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 as a believer, as a Muslim for me, it's just prayers every day and then try to work out how best you could, you could put on in it. Bishop, do you have anything? No, no. no you are fine. 
No more questions. Thank you, Mr. Bachele. Do you have any final word for the commission and for the country, of course? Yeah, uh, I, as I as I stated, I think the commission is on its right route because if if there are still people out there who have missed a lot in the Gambia and it affects them. You know, both emotionally, you know, mentally. And I think it have um, it has it has um, it will have a long effect in their lives and their families' lives. And if think if the commission could work out such a situation whereby People can be counseled and try to restore some of these missing things in their life. I think it is very important. And Gambia is a small country. The population, we have good brains there, we have very intellectual people. And the route that we are trying to take now, I think, doesn't help, especially in in the media, uh, people stand harassing each other and doing other things. This could end up producing an other AI happening on this new life. I think we should try to understand each other, come to terms and develop that little country for everybody, whether you are in the country or outside. It's not bad words or bad things or swearing on each other that could be that nation is to use our initiative intellectually to come to terms with what is going on and try and be that nation. So I'm praying for everybody in the land, whether you are in the Western world or in the diaphragm or wherever you are. I think we should storm our brains together, join hands and try to build up that nation. We have lack of everything and we are far behind of any developing country in that continent. So may Allah help us all. Thank you very much Mr. Bacheli for testifying before the commission. Thank you lead council. Thank you commissioners. Thank you media interpreters, audience. This session has come to a close. We are adjourned until Monday at 10 o'clock. Thank you.